Christmas everybody this is Christmas Eve and I uh, just wanted to say Merry Christmas and hope everybody is uh, able to spend some time with their loved ones and friends uh, during the holiday season I know uh, it's a time of year I look forward to to spend some of those times with my family both my kids are coming home and we're gonna go to my brother-in-law Randy's place and see some more family and spend some spend some time together and eat some yummy Christmas food so I hope I hope you all are able to do the same thing I really wanted to say thank you uh, to everyone for all your support uh, all the positive comments appreciate those it's awesome very humbling um, also thank you for those who have bought uh, merchandise out of my store uh, the calls and the, the shirts and the hats thank you so much um, the uh, the proceeds from that really go back in to the coffers to make these kind of films happen um, so I appreciate your support thank you so much um, so mouth tab madness uh, talk a little bit about yesterday's hunt ah uh, man I I got fooled uh, D Dusty and I got fooled and maybe you know I don't know he kind of seems to know a little bit of a little bit of everything from kind of as as things are kind of turning out and you starting to see some of these cameraman vlogs maybe he knows more than I do I don't know kind of seems like it um, <laughs> uh, we got fooled just like the uh, the title of the film showed when the other hunter is a bull elk uh, <laughs> we heard this bull we heard this bugle way up high up by the trail so we hiked in on this trail a mile and a half two miles uh, before we bailed off over the side down into the crap and we heard this faint faint bugle way up high uh, up by the trail and the wind was blowing as you could tell in the way in the video um, it was pretty loud um, and it was really hard to hear anything and we heard this bugle, bugle way up there and uh, but to get to that point we kind of sat down for there for 20 30 minutes or so and just started calling. We sat there and called, um, and it wasn't the same kind of a calling scenario as we did earlier in one of the other films, where we kind of slowly ramped it up to a kind of a frenzy. We were, I, I, we sat there and I bugled about every couple minutes, just a like a locator bugle, and then I would throw out a few cow calls, just like. There were some elk that were hanging out, bedded down midday, and it was just kind of a non-aggressive bugle. Um, after we sat there for quite a while, probably 30 minutes, there in that high wind, I just wanted to make sure my, my calls were, were penetrating. You know, sometimes we can't hear um, the bulls reply. They can hear us. They've got a lot better ears than us, especially we were up on kind of a ridge, you know, and we were right on the edge of a big, big drainage there. Um, the calls could have been penetrating down in there where the wind was calm and the bulls could have heard us But we couldn't hear them. So I wanted to make sure those calls got out there and got to sit for a while Because a lot of times if you do that the bulls will start coming closer and then pretty soon You'll be able to hear them and that's kind of exactly what happened that bull from up towards the top uh he started coming our way when we very first heard it we thought i think i made a comment said was that a squeak tree you know when the wind blows and you get a tree that kind of makes that squeaky noise um we, i was a little unsure uh but it kept on making that noise a little bit louder a little bit louder but it's still very faint you couldn't even pick it up with the camera but it was real fluty really high pitched and fluty and it seemed i'm just like yeah coming from the trail it's got to be it's got to be doug he He's going to follow us down in here. Man, he's going to be mad when he gets all the way down here and it's a hunter. But I wasn't 100% sure yet because it was windy enough. And finally, that bull bugled about, I don't know, 60, 80 yards away. He was under 100 yards for sure. And I was like, oh, that's a bull. So then we were scrambling because we had we were sitting there with the camera off, you know, just kind of waiting for something to happen. And, and that bull bugled real close. I'm like, holy cow. So we grabbed our gear, uh, set up, found a couple good shooting lanes and set up to where maybe the wind would be okay. It had been kind of blowing back and forth and up and down. It's just the wind was terrible that day. And that bull, he smelled us. He, he I had to have, he had to have. I don't think he saw us. It was pretty, pretty brushy, as you could tell in that country. But uh, he must have smelled us, and we didn't hear him again. 
So we kept on going down in the hole there to try to find something else that would we could stir up. But we just, you know, it's kind of a ghost town down there. Some of the comments that said, man, that's some beautiful lush elk country. And man, you'd think there'd be a lot of elk there. And you know, back in the 90s, there, there was a ton of elk in that country. But today, um, you walk into those kind of places and you you may, you may not hear a bugle. Um, we were lucky, I think, to even hear that bugle. We spent some time down there in the bottom, didn't hear nothing, kind of, I laid around there for a little bit and tried to take a little nappy and, and uh, <laughs> threw some logs down. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are the same way. You find a rickety old log in the woods and that's still standing and you push it a little bit, it's like, Ah, the kid inside me says, push that stupid thing over, so. <laughs> Makes me feel like a big man. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, we played around down there for a while and then finally said, heck with it, let's get out of here. We thought, well, maybe we'll be able to hike out and get out of here in time to, you know, put something together maybe in another, another place, a different bowl or something. And so we start hiking out of there and we get, you know, getting close to the top. And, you know, I would hike for a while and then stop and bugle. Hike for a while, stop and bugle. Kind of, that's kind of the MO. I'd, you know, hike and, and bugle about every time we take a rest break. That way you can kind of catch your breath and kind of bugle. And we heard that Doug Flutie bull again. And he was over kind of where he came from. And I was like, yeah, that's great. But the wind was horrible. And that's just the, that's the thing about the wind. If the wind's blowing at the elk, there's, there's no, no game to play. So... Um, we elected to walk away. The winds were just too bad. I didn't want to spook that bull anymore. We'd already kind of educated him earlier that day. So we're like, heck with it. We'll come, we'll hike out and maybe we'll come back to in there, you know, later on. So we hiked out and, and called it a day in that place. But yeah, it was a, it was a, it's a gnarly place to hunt. I mean, a lot of comments about the, the, the terrain and, and difficult brush and stuff. And, and I have to say, you know, it's similar to the coastal region, but the, it seems like the coastal region, you guys have all that stuff that's trying to kill you, you know, all the blackberry brush and the devil's club and all that stuff, uh, stinging nettles. We just don't have that up there in the high country, but, um, it's like walking on trip wires all day, all that huckleberry brush. It's just, you, you just have to drag your feet through it and then part the bushes and part go through the alders and around the alders and up and down yeah it's i'm not complaining well maybe i am a little bit but it's it's tough country to hunt it's, it'll wear you out and especially if it's a little bit wet even just a little bit wet that stuff just soaks you in so it's a little demoralizing i'm pretty tough as far as you know not letting it get to me too bad because i've been hunting that country long enough but you know i, I can imagine um, and it, and it does wear on me, but I can imagine for folks that they're not used to it, it'd be, it'd very, be very demoralizing. So anyway, we have some questions that in comments from viewers below had some questions about moon phase. Um, what was my favorite, uh, part of the time of the moon phase to hunt? And, um, uh, also how does the moon affect the elk? And typically, um, the, the moon will affect the elk by, if it's a full moon, a lot of times they will spend a lot less time up and around in the daylight hours. They'll, they'll go bed down earlier in the morning and they'll kind of stick to their beds longer. And then, uh, and then the evenings, I've seen it both ways. I've seen them stick to their beds right until right before dark and not move. But sometimes uh, if the weather's not too bad, uh, as far as like temperature, if it's, it's fairly cool out um, and maybe you've had some moisture, Sometimes they'll get out of bed mid-afternoon, you know, three or four o'clock and get up and move around and stretch their legs and then start the, the evening's activities. So it can go either way. On hot, dry years here in Idaho, when it's just hot and dry and full moon, I've seen it to where bulls wouldn't bugle uh, in the daylight. Uh, you know, they would clam up 30 minutes before first light and they wouldn't start cranking until 30 minutes after first light. They would lay down in the brushiest, thickest alder patches you can find. And it's a pretty tough gig at that point. You know, they're not, they're not moving around much in the daytime. And it seems like the weather, you know, I talk a lot on this series about a lot about the weather and how the, the wet, rainy year we'd had, you know, that this September was probably the, the wettest one we've ha had and that I could remember. 
my buddy Cody Kellum always says, the weather kind of shuffles the deck, you know. Let's say you have been having really nice weather and then you get a big rainstorm or snowstorm and you've been bugling bulls like crazy and then as soon as you hit that that weather, uh, the bulls will shut down. And that's very common, very true. Um, I've had it to where when it's that hot, dry, full moon and nothing will make a peep in the daytime and a snowstorm moves in or a, or a nice wet front moves in, that makes the bulls just crank up and go on fire it's like they've been kind of waiting around wishing for some cooler weather and kind of like we do you know um, when it's too hot out and and i've had it shuffle the deck to where they it, it sets them off and they get going so we had a lot of rain this year and it seems like every time it would rain it was kind of rainy cruddy weather and then every time it would rain that would kind of make them clam up a bit so it made us really struggle to, to try to find any elk that would bugle and in an area that has so few elk that compounds the problem you know so it was a ton and ton of moving and covering country and just trying to find one that will bugle because as you can see you're not going to spot and stalk elk there you're not going to still hunt you're not going to hunt over water every little crick draw has a has water in it um a guy could maybe tree stand hunt maybe a crossing or something but with with the the wolves coming around you know the elk may be in a pattern one day and the next they may blow out of there and be three drainages over uh, or just hunker down somewhere and quit moving so yeah the the alternate tactics besides bugling is it's tough in that country anyway yeah and my favorite probably my favorite moon phase um is usually after a full moon after you've had a spell of full moon and that full start that moon starts fading away as it starts fading away that's usually the time i would rather start hunting as on the fading away part instead of the building up part because as it builds up it seems like you go if the bulls are bugling pretty good every day that the moon gets bigger and bigger and bigger um, their daytime activity will kind of slow down a little bit so I kind of prefer it on the back side but hunting out of state you know sometimes you like in Montana or Wyoming um, I've hunted out of state when there's a full moon and the elk are affected still by it but I don't think as much as these Idaho elk man the Idaho elk are they're sensitive it, for <laughs> they're sensitive little guys <laughs> up there in North Idaho and they're sensitive to everything and it seems like um, any little change any little weird thing kind of sets them off to in a bad way in a bad way so uh, yeah like Wyoming um, a lot of times you know you'll be hunting a full moon but the weather you know you got crisp cold mornings and maybe bluebird days and afternoons but in a full moon but uh, afternoon you know you'll have some really great afternoons from from 12 o'clock on right up till dark you know we've had some amazing call-ins so but that early morning when they go from being up all night to their bedding areas that that short window will or that window will shorten up and there may not have have as much time on their feet in the morning but it seems like they come out a little earlier in the afternoon to play or we've had some really really awesome midday action so um so i wouldn't i wouldn't count it out let's say you know that's the only time you can schedule your vacation is during a full moon um it's not my favorite time to hunt during a full moon but you can make the most of it um when you're out there so so yeah great questions thank you all right, I hope you guys aren't getting tired of my little intro to every video of uh, me reminding reminding you all to uh, sign up for the uh, the big bow giveaway and all the other cool stuff we're giving away. My good buddies down at Diamondback uh, Shooting Range, um, they have indoor um, handgun range and indoor archery. They have like a 3D, that 3D... <sighs> virtual hunt i can't remember what you call it but it's where the you know the animals are are on a big screen and you shoot your bow at them anyway those guys are the ones uh down there that take care of my my bow set up and get me going and, and hook me up with the mouth tab uh justin and dan and and they said um whoever wins the bow if you'd like um we can set it up with your draw length and and stuff with your with your specs before we ship it to you so thanks for watching we'll see you tomorrow tomorrow should be a pretty decent pretty decent hunt i'll just leave it right there see you then thanks guys